Hey everybody, welcome back. So got a really quick and cool video for you today on Cohen's Kappa. So this is the Greek letter Kappa and not a K. And to explain it, we're going to dive into an example to begin with as we do on this channel. So let's say that you're trying to hire a new person for your company. And you have two people who are on the board who's making the decision on whether to hire a person or not. So each row you see in these tables is going to be for a candidate. So you have five candidates that you're considering. And this first set is saying that this person, Mr. Red, gave the first candidate a yes, second candidate yes, third candidate yes, fourth candidate and the fifth candidate got a no. Mrs. Blue said yes, no, yes, no, yes. Now one thing we might care to do is understand the level of agreement between these two folks. Do they usually agree? Do they usually disagree? How do we measure that? The most natural, straightforward, naive way to measure that seems to be go candidate by candidate and count the number of times they agreed with each other and divide that by the total number of candidates they were. That seems totally natural. If we do that, we get that they agreed on the first candidate, they agreed on the third candidate, and they agreed on the fourth candidate. So there's three agreements out of five candidates for this set of ratings here. Now let's say we had instead this set of ratings here where the first person, Mr. Red's ratings are unchanged. They're still a yes, 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 no, no. And just to make sure these are clear, let's call the first set of ratings A and let's call the second set B. That'll line up with the terminology later on. So in ratings B, again, first persons are the same. Mrs. Blues have changed. They're now mostly no's. That notion is gonna be important again later, but they're now mostly no's with this one yes up here. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and compute the same level of agreement from before. So they agreed on the first candidate and they agreed on the fourth and the fifth candidates. So again, we got three places, three candidates where they agreed, divided by five candidates total. And so it seems like the level of agreement for B and the level of agreement for ratings A are the exact same. And if we're using this metric, that's indeed true. They agreed three times and there's five candidates total. But let's think about this just a little bit more. And let's start by looking at, for Mr. Red, what was the rate or probability looking at Red's ratings alone that he would say yes to a candidate? Well, that's gonna be three out of five. So Mr. Red has, we can say based on this observational data, a three out of five chance of giving a yes to a candidate. In these ratings here, A, what is Mrs. Blue's rate of giving a yes? Well, that's the same, three yeses out of five total candidates. So the rate of giving a yes is the exact same. Now, if Mr. Red and Mrs. Blue have the same exact rate of giving a yes, and therefore the same exact rate of giving a no, then we would expect by just simple random chance alone that they would agree on any given candidate to be considerably high because they have the same propensity to give a yes to a candidate. So now if we see a yes and a yes, as we do in the first row here, that agreement could come from one of two sources. It could come from just pure randomness based on this baseline probability that either of them independently would give a yes to a candidate. Or it could come from truly agreeing, from this true underlying agreement between Mr. Red and Mrs. Blue. And to really understand that, let's do the same thing in looking at rankings B. So in rankings B, Mr. Red has the same ratings and so therefore the same three out of five chance of giving a yes, of giving a yes to a candidate. Mrs. Blue now is completely different. Mrs. Blue only has a one out of five chance of giving a yes to a candidate, only one out of the five. So now when we see a yes and a yes, as we do in the first row again, how likely do you think that is due to random chance versus due to just them underlying having an agreement with each other as people? That seems much more likely to be the latter because Mrs. Blue is very likely to give a no. And so the fact that she did give a yes here seems that it probably comes from the fact that these two people are more likely to agree with each other beyond just random chance alone. All that story, all that nuance is lost by just looking at this number of times they agree divided by the number of candidates there are. The thing we're missing here, the thing we haven't captured, is the baseline in each of these cases. The baseline probability that these two people would agree with each other by random chance alone. And that is not the thing we are after. If anything, we want to eliminate that from our overall measure of how much these two people agree with each other. And so let's start there. We actually care about agreement beyond randomness. So we care about not just agreement between two people, we care about the agreement beyond just pure chance alone. So let's go ahead and start by measuring what the agreement would be by pure chance alone. So in our example A, in our rankings A here, the probability that two people, these two people would agree by pure chance alone would be the probability they both said yes, 
plus the probability they both said no, because there's just two cases in this situation. But I want to note that you can apply this to any number of cases. If instead of yes or no, they were ranking the candidate by giving a score of 1 through 5, then we could say probability they would both say 1, plus probability they would both say 2, and on and on until the probability they would both say 5, and we would sum up all five of those terms together. But here it's much simpler. What's the probability they both say yes to a candidate by random chance alone? Well, 3 out of 5 and 3 out of 5, they have the same propensity here. Plus, the other way they could both agree is if they both said no to a candidate by random chance alone. So that's going to be 2 out of 5 times 2 out of 5, and so we get 13 out of 25. And that is the probability that these two people would agree with each other on the ratings by random chance alone, purely by looking at their individual propensities to say yes or no. We go through the same exercise for B. So the probability that Mr. Red would give a yes is 3 out of 5. Probability Mrs. Blue would give a yes is 1 out of 5 as you computed there. And then we add the no's and we get 11 out of 25. So let's pause here for a second and see that the math has lined up with what we believed intuitively, which is that in the A case, in the A rankings, there is a higher probability for them to agree with each other by random chance alone. And we thought that intuitively because they had the same propensities of giving a yes or giving a no. In the B case, it's only 11 over 25, so they have a lower chance of agreeing with each other by random chance alone. Now using this information, and using the information about the more naive metric, now in which rankings, A or B, would you say that these two people, Mr. Red and Mrs. Blue, are more agreeing with each other? Well, if we think about it, we think about it for a second, we realize that it should be B. And the story goes like this. In A, we found there's a higher probability that Mr. Red and Mrs. Blue would agree with each other by random chance alone. And so the additional lift in agreement, which is going from this 13 over 25 to this 3 over 5 that we actually observed, that lift is going to be smaller, is going to be smaller than in example B where the baseline was lower and we got to the same exact number. So to kind of just give you a crude visual here, we can see that the baseline in case A was over here, the baseline in case B was lower, the overall agreement, as we naively measured, gets to the same place either way. And so the lift in case A is measured by this arrow here, in case A, and the lift in case B is measured by this arrow here. And because that's what we're trying to measure is the agreement beyond randomness or the additional agreement on top of randomness, which is measured by this lift here, we see that B should actually have a higher agreement. So this should have a high agreement and this should have a relatively low agreement between the two people here. How do we measure that lift mathematically? Well, we can do a very simple formula. We can just say that the numerator should be the lift itself, 3 out of 5 minus 13 over 25, looking at case A here. So that's exactly the size of this arrow in case A. And the denominator should be some kind of normalizing factor, which is if we had gotten a perfect agreement, which would be measured by 1.0, meaning that they lined up in all five of these cases. And again, minus that baseline probability of them agreeing with each other by random chance alone, which is 13 over 25. So again, just to say this again to make sure we understand, the numerator is measuring the additional lift beyond random chance alone for case A, and the denominator is measuring the total amount of additional lift that was available, which we're getting the perfect agreement minus that baseline probability. So if we work out the math here, we get 1 over 6. And now without even saying Cohen's kappa at any point, we have calculated the formula for Cohen's kappa. This is the Cohen's kappa for case A. That's exactly how you compute it. It's going to be the observed agreement minus the baseline agreement by random chance alone divided by 1 minus the baseline agreement by random chance alone. I didn't show the full uh, working out of the numbers for case B, but you can go through it for yourself. And you find that for case B, the Cohen's kappa is going to be 2 over 7. 2 over 7 is higher than 1 over 6. And that confirms what we thought mathematically here and intuitively here, which is that the agreement between Mr. Red and Mrs. Blue in case B is going to be higher than the agreement between Mr. Red and Mrs. Blue in case A. And that is how you calculate mathematically and intuitively Cohen's kappa. So basically, in a nutshell, if I explain it in one sentence, it's measuring the agreement between two people for a set of ratings beyond randomness, beyond just random chance alone. Because if we just count the number of agreements divided by the number of cases we have, we're missing that crucial factor of 
the baseline probability for any given person to give a certain rating, like give a yes, give a no, give a score of one, two, three, four, five, because people just have underlying different propensities. Like if you think about the real world, if you've ever uh, interviewed somebody or if you've ever been on the other side of an interview, you probably understand that some people just say no all the time. Some people just say yes all the time. And so we wanna take that into account when we're trying to understand how much do you agree as an interviewer with some other interviewer. So hopefully that helped to understand Cohen's Capital better. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. I do read all of them. If you like this video, please, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see all you wonderful folks next time.